finally got to the operating area where we retrieved the orbital and we saw it coming down on the parachutes. Uh, honestly, it was kind of a, almost an emotional response. It hit the water and the ship broke out into a cheer. Uh, it was really a, a great moment. This is honestly my first time working with NASA uh, and I honestly have to say that in my 23 years in the Navy, this is probably the coolest mission I've ever been part of. It's also the first one that was ever live streamed while we were doing the mission. So, How was the Portland uh, uh, chosen to be the pickup uh, ship? So the Portland's actually done a number of uh, practice evolutions too. So the ship's been uh, practicing to do this scenario for the last couple months. NASA has uh, provided a lot of classroom training, simulator training. And uh, two weeks ago we actually got underway in the Southern California operating area here. And we had a, uh, a mock-up orbital and we did the actual full uh, recovery. Uh, practicing it at well sea. so Portland is uh, one of the newest ships of the San Antonio class of LBDs if you look at the just the well deck here uh, and the size of the ship uh, we bring uh, multiple uh, mission areas to this kind of event so the LPD is kind of the the go-to for NASA yeah. if you look at we have a, a great flight deck so we can uh, you know embark and uh, fly on fly off all sorts of aircraft which supported this mission I can put a number of small boats in the water, which is what we connected the orbital to. And then, uh, you know, I have a very robust uh, communication suite, which allowed NASA to be a kind of an at-sea command center. What was the reaction of the skippers? I heard that the skippers at the Anchorage and the San Diego to, oh, you guys get to do it. I think uh, anybody who's been practicing this mission uh, was just excited that we got to, that the Navy got to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, ever, all of their training and all of their lessons learned help make this such a successful event. Uh, all the uh, Artemis missions landed in the Pacific near here? Currently that's the baseline, but as we refine the mission and the objectives and the mechanics of it, that could potentially change. I think that's just right now what we're thinking at this time. But I'm the operations division chief for the for the program, so I'm actually the bo the bo my, my own boss right now. So do you have to give any instructions? Yeah, so, the, so during the last phase of recovery when everything's just kind of happening and we're jettisoning hardware and, and parachutes are coming out, most of that is clockwork. Um, I do have to keep people safe and clear them to the capsule, so they have to wait until I give them a go based on where all the pieces of debris are falling. Uh, that happens pretty automatically. Afterwards, we're definitely involved in powering things down, giving the people the go-ahead to do the work. But this team is a well-oiled machine. They've done amazing. We've had five underway tests to develop this CONOPS. The Navy, just professional operators, very good at what they do. So um, it was pretty much like clockwork. Do you know, um, how would you describe the improvements in technology and computation that allow uh, the, uh, the Orion to come back so close to shore as opposed to the Apollos, which were way out in the Pacific or the Orion. Right, yeah, so we've got, uh, man, the computational power that we have these days is amazing, and so we really can fine tune um, where we want to land, but it is pretty amazing that we make that calculation once we send it home from the moon and it still lands where we need it to land for the future ones. Are you surprised with the condition that it's no, I think it looks pretty good. I mean, it definitely yeah. looks like it's come back from space. Um, you know, everything's charred and, yeah. and, and burned away like it should, but I think it looks really good. They've decided, but, you know, the heat shield brought the capsule back safely, so in the very base level, it did what we needed it to do. Yeah. For the first person, the first woman on, on moon would be would be a nice, nice, uh, nice uh, yeah, thing that, too. Yeah, that'd be all right, yeah. Well, the launch, you know, was a long time in coming, and people talk about the delays and the different attempts, but at the end of the day, in history, nobody remembers that. They remember right. the launch, how important that was, what a significant milestone, and the landing, and we're moving forward. You know, this is the next step to take our astronauts to the moon. What were the uh, technological advances that allowed for coming down so close to the shore? I think a lot of it has to do with our GPS system and uh, how we uh, use 
space-based systems to help with our navigation. Okay. And, uh, you know, you nail it. What was the biggest surprise? I think how clean it was overall. It's a test flight. Uh, we wanted to push the limits, to stress the system, and to see things that just clicked off, you know, so perfectly. Uh, it was amazing. So is there any museum that has uh, first dibs on it? Uh, that I don't know, but it is a historic artifact for sure. So now they're announcing uh, at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory a positive ignition test with the uh, with the fusion uh, reactor. Uh, you know, the, the prospect of uh, clean, free energy for, for for all of mankind. Could any of confusion energy power a uh, spacecraft? A long, long distance mission. I, I hope so. That I, I I don't know. This mission, the Artemis mission. It talks about the moon, the Mars, and beyond. What does beyond mean? Well, we're talking about the entire solar system. But, you know, they're like baby steps. First, we got to yes. get to the moon. Yes. we got to learn how to survive on the moon and then go to Mars. Well, the first step is Mars, and, and that's a, a huge right. step in itself. Are, you, are we going to beat uh, the ch uh, China to landing on the moon? I hope so. Is, is there another space race, basically? You know, for us, how many countries have actually put... Uh, humans on the moon. Pardon? How many countries have put people on the moon? One. Yeah. And what was the last person to walk on the moon? Yeah. December 12, 1972. Right. So the day we landed Orion was the 50th anniversary of Apollo 17. So um, I think the way, I know the way our program is moving forward, um, we're going to do it again. And we're excited. 